Welcome to my January reseller income report. This month was on par with last month. A lot of the sales numbers are pretty much the same and the type of items that have been selling are very similar. But just like all the other months, I had some fast, amazing sales and I also had some sales that weren't that great that didn't bring in that much profit. So let's talk about it all. Starting off with seven sales that sold for high profit. The first one on the list is this pair of UGG waterproof leather and suede ankle boots. They sold on Poshmark for $99. I paid $7.91 for them. The profit was $71.29 and they sold in 29 days. UGG boots sell really good this time of year. The bad thing is that most thrift stores price them up. Sometimes they will slip through the cracks and get priced a little bit lower, but most of the time that is not the case. So I try to pick them up only on half off days, but sometimes if the boots are in great condition and they're great style, I'll go ahead and pay the full price, which is normally around $35 to $40, which was the case for this next sale that happened on Poshmark. It was these pair of UGG waterproof leather ankle booties. They sold for $75. I paid $7.00. 91 cents for these but that was an average cost of goods the actual price was more like $35 nonetheless the profit was $52.09 and they sold in just 13 days I decided to pay the whole $35 because they were in excellent condition they were practically like brand new no sort of wear no sort of scuffs I did want more for these. I expected to get more like $90 to $100, but the comps were showing more about $85. And even though these looked like new, I listed them as gently used because they didn't have any tags or anything. They got a decent amount of attention, as you can see by the likes down here, but no one was accepting the offer that I was sending. So when someone sent me the $75 offer, I went ahead and accepted it because I knew that I had paid up for them and the profit was still decent so i just basically wanted to go ahead and recoup my money quickly next we have a sale on mercari it was this michael kors hamilton brown leather logo handbag it sold for 140 dollars i paid 75 for it and the profit was 46.65 and this took 50 days to sell the cost of goods is so high because this is a consignment item my cousin gave me a bunch of her stuff to sell and a lot of it was these Michael Kors bags. This one came with the set, the purse, and the wallet. So maybe I could have asked for a little more for it, but since it had been listed for so long, I just went ahead and accepted this offer. The next sale was the same bag, but this one did not have the set. It sold on Poshmark for $120. I paid $55 for this one. The profit was $41 and this one sold a lot faster. It sold in 10 days. So as I said, she gave me a bunch of Michael Kors stuff, a lot of handbags, and all of the ones that look like this that have the monogram, some in cream white, some in different colors have sold already. The ones that are still sitting in my closet right now are the more plain ones, the more simple ones that are solid colors. Those I still have. So now I know if I see these out at the thrift store that they will sell anywhere from 120 to 150 and to pay out for the ones that have the all around logo like this and maybe skip or do specific comps on the ones that are more plain. Alrighty, now we have an eBay sale. It was these Allegria slip resistant clocks. They sold for $50. I paid $6.67 for them. My final profit was $39.84 and they sold in 27 days, so a little less than a month. This was my second time finding these kind of shoes by Allegria. I believe they're just like nursing shoes, comfy shoes that people like to wear. These made me a little nervous because they were on the smaller side. They were a size 37, so that's like a six and a half US sizing. So I was afraid that I'd sit on them for too long, but they ended up doing okay, selling in a little less than a month. Both of the times that I picked up this brand, they've sold on eBay. So if you ever find these, make sure to post yours on eBay. Next, we have another UGG sale, and these are the tan suede boots with the sheepskin lining. They sold for $52. I paid an average cost of goods, $7.91. 
But for these, it was more like $18 because they were half off. My final profit was $37.08 and they were listed for only three days. These are the kind of Ugg boots that I would not pay full price for. I wait for these to go on sale for half off and even then sometimes I hesitate to pick them up because most of the time they are in horrible condition. But these were in like new condition. They had very minimal wear and they were a size wide nine. Wide sizes tend to perform better, so all of that combined, I decided to go ahead and pay the $18 for them, and it paid off. It left me a good amount of profit. And the last high profit sale we'll talk about also happened on Mercari. It was these Nike fleece line suede winter boots. They sold for $49. I paid $7.91 for these and the final profit was $34.47. They were listed for only two days. I'd never seen Nike boots like this, so when I saw them, they instantly intrigued me. After looking at them closely, I saw that they were in great condition. They were a great size at a size 10 and the price was decent as well. So I went ahead and picked them up, didn't even do comps. Sometimes that can be a bad idea, but in this case, it paid off. Now let's move on to seven sales that did not bring in as much money and that I'll probably be passing on next time I'm out sourcing. First on the list are these Azura Genuine Leather Tribal Print Heels. They sold on Poshmark for $10. I paid $4.03 and my final profit was seven cents. It might as well had been nothing, but the days listed was 488 days. This must be the longest that I've ever had an item listed for. I picked these shoes up when I was barely learning how to source. This must have been my third or fourth uh, thrift trip. The worst part about it is that I actually filmed that and it's up on my YouTube channel. So if you want to learn what not to pick up, go watch that video. But let's just run by some of the key things that I think made this item not do so well. First of all, it's the brand. It is Azura and it is by Springstep. Springstep is not a good brand to pick up unless you have the El Artiste, I think that's what you'd call them, type shoes, then they probably aren't gonna do well. The size is a horrible size at a size six as well. Those tend to move a lot slower and just the overall style of it, it's probably a little bit outdated, not as modern, not as trendy. The next sale also happened on Poshmark. It was the Zara embroidered long bell sleeve peasant blouse. It sold for $10. That was an offer that I happily accepted. I paid $4.21 average cost of goods. My final profit was $2.84 and this was listed for 205 days. I think this was an item that I probably paid $1 actual cost of goods for. In my mind, I thought for $1, this is a pretty good top. I think that I can get $15 out of it. I thought that the embroidery, the color of it was nice, but I was very wrong. It took too long to sell and the profit it brought back was definitely not worth it. The next one also happened on Poshmark and looking at it now, Six out of the seven sales we're going to talk about happened on Poshmark. I don't know why that is, but that's the way it worked out. This is a Torrid plus size casual denim vest. It sold for $17. I paid $5.88 for this. The profit was $5.26 and the days listed was 64. I usually love picking up Torrid. I think maybe I listed this at the wrong season. It may have sold for a little more had I'd waited, maybe just for like $3 more though. The actual cost of goods for this must have been a couple dollars. So overall, not a terrible sell, but still I'm really starting to slow down on Torrid a lot because this next low profit sell is also a Torrid item. It is these Torrid leopard print mules. They sold for $22. I paid $11.80 for these and that is actual cost of goods because I bought them new on their website. So my final profit was $5.80 
and they took 105 days to sell. I'm still going to continue to pick up Torrid because I love the brand. It usually does flip pretty quickly. I just need to reassess what kind of items I am going to be picking up from them moving forward. Next, again on Poshmark, it was this 100% linen sleeveless dress. It sold for $15. I paid $4.50 for it, so my final profit was $6 after fees, and it took 273 days to sell. I really don't know where this item went wrong. I thought the style was good. It was 100% linen. I listed it in April, so it had all the summer to sell, and it just didn't. But I've come to the conclusion that sleeveless dresses don't sell as good as short sleeve ones or the long sleeve. And this all over lace type pattern is not performing well either. Next we have these Cupid Royal Satin Lace Up Booties that sold on Mercari for $19. I paid $10 for them. The profit was $6.25 and they were listed for 22 days. The cost of goods on these is a little bit higher because it was a consignment item. Normally I skip over this brand when I see it at the thrift store. Cupid usually doesn't sell for much, but if I had picked this up at the thrift store, it would have been for like a dollar to two dollars that's normally what it is priced at so it wouldn't have been a terrible sell had my cost of goods been a little bit lower the good thing about this is that it didn't take too long to sell this next one did take a long time to sell it was this gap button denim summer jean skirt it sold for $12 I paid $2.50 for it my final profit was $6.55 and it was listed for 256 days I wouldn't mind making a profit of six to seven dollars on things if they're gonna move quickly at the very least but this took way too long to sell I don't remember quite when I listed it I don't know if it did have a chance to sell before summer was over but but nowadays when I'm picking up uh, mall brands like these like Gap, Old Navy, Banana Republic, I look at the tag that's inside the clothing and check out the year. If the year is more recent then I consider picking it up depending on the type of style but if it's over five seven years old then I'm less likely to pick it up. These next set of sales are seven items that flew off the shelf literally because they sold the same day that I listed them. The first one one is these pair of Michael Kors studded black leather heels. They sold for $27 on Poshmark. I paid $7.91 for them. Final profit was $13.69 and they were obviously listed for zero days. Not all Michael Kors shoes do well for me, but I do like picking up these type of evening studded type heels. They normally sell around the $25 to $27 mark. So if they're a good price and if they're a good size, like these were a size 10, then I will definitely give them a try. Next sell that sold very quickly is this Ralph Lauren reversible quarter zip sweater. It sold for $20 on Poshmark. I paid $4.90 for it and the final profit was $11.10. This sold maybe less than an hour after I listed it. I picked this up because it was a larger size and because it was reversible and it was a men's item and I'm trying to put more men's items into my closet. I think if I would have waited a little bit on this sweater, I could have gotten more than $20. When I went to go delisted from Mercari, I was getting questions about it already. So I think that I could have gotten a little bit more. But since it was going to be a fast flip, I just went ahead and accepted the offer that I got for this. And more than likely, it was a slow day sale, so that's what made me accept it as well. But this next Ralph Lauren sale made up for it. It was this Ralph Lauren cable knit v-neck sweater. It sold for $32 full price. I paid $4.90. The profit was $20.70 and this also sold within an hour of listing it. These Ralph Lauren cable knit sweaters don't sit in my closet for too long so I always pick them up as long as the condition is good and the price is not too high. And they always end up selling at about $25 to $30. I listed this at $32 hoping to get closer to like the $24 mark but someone ended up buying it outright. 
This next sale is a good one. It happened on Mercari. It was this white mountain fur lined suede boots with a double buckle on the ankle. They sold for $38. I paid $7.91 for these. The final profit was $24.89 and the days listed was zero. This is my third time picking up this brand. The first time it was a pair of heels and they are still sitting in my closet right now. The second and third time were boots and both times those pairs of boots sold pretty quickly for a good amount of money. So I'll continue looking out for this brand. It's nothing too special. The materials are man-made. It's faux leather, faux suede. But some of these boots sell on style alone, especially the combat style boots. Next, we're moving on to a fast sell that happened on eBay. It was this Dooney & Burt green leather handbag. It sold for $25, but it was actually $42.75 after shipping costs. I paid $6.40, so after fees and shipping, my final profit was $19. This purchase was a mistake. It did have a flaw. It had the little logo falling off here, and I didn't notice until I got home that that was loose. So with that in mind, I decided to just take the first offer that came my way. Normally when I pick up items by accident that are flawed, my main goal is just to get rid of them and get my money back as soon as I can. So that was the thought process behind this and why I accepted the $25. Could have probably sold for double that had I waited a bit or had it not been flawed. But because she paid $14.95 for shipping and I paid a lot less, that left room for a little bit of profit. This next fast sale happened on Mercari. It was this Patagonia organic cotton flannel shirt. It sold for $38. I paid $5.20 for it. The final profit was $27.60. And again, it sold same day that I listed it. This shirt, I actually picked it up at a Plato's Closet, which is kind of like a used clothes store here in Texas. I don't go there too often, but sometimes when I'm low on inventory, it's so close by my house, so I'll just head there to see what I can find. When I saw this shirt, I like the brand. I know that Patagonia can do good. But since it was not out of wear, I didn't know if I should pick it up, especially because the actual cost of goods was more like $10. But in the end, it worked out better than I expected. The last fast selling item is these pair of Roxy faux leather buckle western boots. They sold on Poshmark for $29. I paid $7.91 for them. And the final profit was $15.29. And these actually sold in one day. So they didn't sell the same day. I did have other sales that did sell the same day that I listed it. But I wanted to show you these because it was a great sale on a brand that you wouldn't think would be good. I skipped most of Roxy things that I see out in the thrift store. But these, I picked them up because of the style. They are Western, they had the tribal print. Let's see, the size was size eight, so a good size. They had the buckle going on here. The type of leather that it is, this distressed leather seems to do good too. And the actual cost of goods for this must have been three to four dollars. So I bring up this sale and say all of that to impress upon you that Western buckled distressed leather boots do really good and that it's not always about brands. Sometimes the style alone can do the trick. So look out for Western style boots, they sell good. Moving on to seven sales that took forever to sell. It's not always bad when an item takes too long to sell. Sometimes the wait can actually be worth it. And I actually have two of those in this section. The first one though was not worth it. It was these Bandolino kill tie slip-on black suede heels. They sold for $18. I paid $6 for them and my profit was $8.40. They were listed for 281 days. So the profit, $8.40, it's not terrible. Everything adds up. I'm happy to take that. But if I have to store something for 281 days, that's where the problem lies for me. I want to be moving items a lot faster than that. 
I've experimented with this brand a few times. Most of the time it ends up selling for like the 18 to $20 mark. And most of the time it sells a lot faster than over 200 days. I picked these up because mostly this kill tie, I thought it was trendy. I thought that that did good. I thought that they would sell pretty quickly, but I'm thinking that the size on these is what held them back for longer than they probably would have had they been a larger size. The next slow moving sale happened also on Poshmark. It was these Dr. Show's leather strappy comfort sandals. They sold for $17. I paid $4.50 for them and the final profit was $6.64. These were listed for 175 days. I picked up these sandals because they were a larger size and they were a wide width as well. And also they were like new condition. They had no sort of flaws, no sort of scuffs or anything. And I usually do good with Dr. Shows. I sell their boots and their wedge style sandals for anywhere from $25 to $30. But for some reason, these just kept sitting and kept sitting until someone accepted my $17 offer. Maybe the timing had a lot to do with this. We're still in winter right now, but for sure I will continue to pick up this brand. The next one happened again on Poshmark. It was the Sam Edelman pink suede slip-on bow loafer shoes they sold for $35 I paid $4.66 for these and the profit was $23.34 they were listed for 163 days this is the kind of sale that I'm not mad at when it sits for a little bit longer $23.34 it's okay I'll sit on it if I'm going to make over $20 these actually sold at full price after I relisted them I think maybe the color on these held them back a little bit, but also Sam is one of those brands that's really all over the place. I've sold boots for over $40, sandals for $30, but then again, I've sold flats that have gone for $15 and have sat in my closet forever. So Sam Edelman is just a brand that really, really depends on the style that you have, so do comps when you see it. Then we have these pair of shorts on Mercari. They sold for $21. I paid $5.88 for these. The final profit was $12.11 and the days listed was 147. I listed these at the end of August. So really they did not have a chance to sell before summer was over. So I'm not surprised that this sale ended up in this slow moving category. Can Can is not an exceptional brand, it's not something that I pick up all the time, but it is normally priced fairly low at the thrift store, and these type of distressed frayed shorts sold really well for me all summer long, so that's why I picked these up. Alright, this next sale was definitely worth the wait. It was a Mercari sale, it was this Lounge Fly Disney Lilo & Stitch Hawaiian backpack. It sold for $54. My cost of goods was $0 because this was actually my daughter's from years ago. My final profit was $46.73 and the days listed was $129, so it was over 4 months. I'd never had an item get this much attention. Let me just show you what the Poshmark listing looks like. Look at this, they got 56 likes on Poshmark. I was sending offers from all price ranges with free shipping, but no one was buying. Everyone just liked it and that's it. I started the bag at $85 and slowly dropped the price until someone finally bought it on Mercari. I guess people love Lilo and Stitch, but they're definitely not willing to pay up for it. The next sale happened on Poshmark. It was this Pure Jill layer top. It sold for $18. I paid $4.10 for it, and the final profit was $10.30 and it was listed for 128 days. I've sold this brand a ton in the past and I have a ton listed in my closet right now. It normally does pretty good. It sells for a decent amount, 20 to $25, depending on what it is. And it usually sells in a decent time frame. So this is not a terrible sale per se, because I bet the actual cost of goods was more like a dollar 
I don't remember precisely, but that's usually what I'd pay for something simple like this. I may still pick up items like this, but for the most part, I want to focus on more substantial pieces from this brand because the overall goal here is to move things at a higher sale price and at a faster rate. The next slow moving item happened on Mercari. It was a Brooks Brothers micro plaid button down shirt. It sold for $15. I paid $4.10 for it. And so the final profit was $8.57. The dates listed was 130. And I actually got two Brooks Brothers shirts this day. They both sold for 15, one on Poshmark and one on Mercari. And they both took several months to sell. So I think this brand and this kind of style is a no-go for me. Now let's talk about some of the top selling brands for the month of January. These are gonna be in no particular order because I sold five items of each of these brands that we're going to talk about. The first one is Michael Kors, which was actually on the list last month as well. The average sale price for all the Michael Kors stuff that sold was $73.80. And it's so high because of the large purses. Those just tend to sell for more money, so that is why. But the next brand on the list that sold really well was Torrid. Torrid is pretty much always a uh, top seller for me. The average sale price for every Torrid item that sold in the month of January was $22. As I said earlier, Torrid is one of my favorite brands to pick up. I like it because I like having plus sizes in my closet. The thrift store prices them very low. It's always two to three dollars but I am going to start being a little more picky with it and focusing more on items that are gonna sell for more money like dresses, jackets, and some kind of jeans. The next best selling brand is Nike. The average sale price for all of the Nike items that sold was $55.60. All of the Nike items that sold are shoes and that is just because I skip over most of the clothing. It just never tends to sell that good for me. Even new with tags items, if I pick them up, they only end up selling for like 15 or less. And usually they're priced up a little bit higher at the thrift stores. And even the shoes that do sell, they're the more trendier, more modern type shoes. If you look inside the tags of Nike items on the shoes, you'll be able to see the year. So I would stick with the more recent styles and skip over or do deep comps on styles that are older. The last best-selling brand Brand we're going to talk about is Born or its sub brand called Born of Concept. The average selling price for all of those Born items that sold was $25.40. This is another brand that I love selling. Born boots usually do the best, but come summertime, all of their strappy wedge sandals and even the flat sandals do really good. Now let's talk about the total sales numbers for the month. The total sales was $4,193. Earnings after all of these platforms take out their fees was $3,296 and my cost of goods that I paid for everything that sold in the month of January was $1,042. The profit after cost of goods, after shipping fees and everything was $2,254. And all of these numbers are pretty much in line with the numbers from last month. Breaking the total sales by platform, on Poshmark I sold a total of $2,100 and $96. On Mercari it was $1,335 and eBay was $662. Last month I had my biggest month that I'd ever had on Mercari, which was about $1,000. And this month it went up again by $300. At one point I was really doubting Mercari. I was really doubting whether I should stay on that platform because it just wasn't performing. But I'm really glad that I stuck with it because it has really came through. Now if eBay could do the same, I'd be able to reach my sales goals a lot faster. But now let's look at the work that I had to put in to make those sales numbers. I listed a total of 200 items this month and that is 50 more than last month. So we're making some progress there. That made my average daily listing to six to seven a day. Hitting the 4K in December really pumped me up and motivated me. So I've been focused on listing a lot more, 
but for next month my goal is to make my average daily listing to about eight a day the total items that sold this month was 132 which makes it an average of four to five sales a day which is great that is amazing i never thought i'd get to this point where i'm making that many consistent sales a day but even though i listed more this month than i did last month the amount of sales I made were about the same. Last month it was 131. And I think the reason for that is because I've been listing more spring items. I'm trying to get prepared trying to have those things in my closet before March and April hits. Some of those spring items do end up selling, but a lot of it is just sitting there for the time being. So essentially that's work that I'm putting in that's going to pay off a little later down the road. Out of all those items that sold, the average sold price was 3201. And for me, that is a great number to be at. Now my work here is just to maintain that number. As we move into the hotter months and the items that are going to be selling are going to be more lightweight items. The average cost of goods for the items that sold was $7.96. For the longest time, my average cost of goods was about $5, sometimes a little bit less. Slowly it's been creeping up and now it's staying at around $7 to $8. And that is because I am focusing on getting higher in things things that are going to sell for a little bit more and sometimes those things are priced a little higher at the thrift store but they end up selling for higher so it all equals out in the end if you're a regular viewer then you know that my goal was to hit four thousand dollars in sales across all the platforms that i sell on I've hit that goal two months in a row now, and so now my challenge is to maintain that. I wanna keep making that amount of money for the months to come, but my long-term goal for the year 2022 is to hit $6,000 in overall sales, and I wanna hit that sales number by around June, so around mid-year, so we'll see how that works out. In the comments below, let me know what is your reselling goal for this year? What do you hope to accomplish? If you want to see more of these reseller income reports, I'll leave a playlist right here. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I'll see you next time.